all the village of Cross Plains Finance Advisory and Enhancement Committee of September 6th for order. Roll call, please. Uh, Tim Hillenbrand? Here. John Barant? Here. Jed Henry? Here. He's on but muted. Um, Deb Cutler is absent. Michael Paul Mikulski? Here. I'm here. I can't hear you, Michael. Oh, are you not muted? I hear Michael. <laughs> I am muted. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's me. Uh, Michael Pomakowski. Here. And Jay Lingo. I am here. <laughs> All right. Uh, for public comment, this is an opportunity for anyone to address the Finance Advisory and Enhancement Committee. Please observe the time limit of three minutes. While the Finance Advisory and Enhancement Committee encourages input from residents that may not discuss or act on any issue that is not duly noticed on the agenda. Do we have anybody? Uh, no, we do not have any public comment. Uh, we'll go to reports. Um, I'll just update uh, yesterday at plan. Uh, we approved the short term rental ordinance, so that'll move to the board. Um, there was one other thing that we were related to that we can't think. It's right now. Oh, the, just so you know, we're in the budget process. Uh, all the capital items that were submitted were preliminary approved at the last meeting. We'll be talking about the base budget at the board meeting at the end of this. Uh, that's all I have. Any other committee members? Got it? All right. Finance director. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I forgot to make a note about anything. Sorry. All right. Um, we will go to uh, item number one of general business, discussion and possible approval of the August 2nd, 2023 Finance Advisory and Enhancement Committee minutes. Move. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, a motion and a second to approve the August 2nd, uh, then it's any discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. So move. All right. Discussion and possible action regarding the room tax. Um, if I remember this right, uh, where we left it was we had uh, Middleton's and Verona's examples and um, Deb. I believe he had Stevens Point, if I'm correct. He was looking at Stevens Point, and is that does anybody remember? No, I know that. <laughs> I think yeah. that's the community. Yeah. Was it yeah. Stevens Point? It was Stevens Point. Okay. Um, did anybody have any preference one way or the other on these? I'm just trying to remember. Stevens Point was the one. That it already laid out who was going to get. No, they had a committee that, that was then going to decide who got everything. Yeah. And our, we were discussing just saying, or now we're just going to say these folks. Right. Manage it. Right. Yeah. Because I we're not so. anticipating a lot of income. Yeah. Yeah. That. And see, my. Here's where my hesitation is informing any committee because right now we get zero revenue. And, you know, so, so I would ask someone to be on a committee and they may not meet for easy, two, easy, three easy, years. Ever. Well, yeah, but I know. But <laughs> it's already hard to get people on working committees. I, I, it's, I, I would find it somewhat insulting. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no. Uh, from my perspective, all I wanted to do is say, I think these were the two options. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. No, I agree. I I have I have no and I tend to agree. Committee does not. Any other feelings? Well, we look at the local stuff, it's terrible, right? I mean, we're not reaching out. 
comparing Mona and Milton's to what we want to do? Is that what you're? No, I, it, it, it's it's the thing that now that we're going to pass short term rental ordinance. Most of the time, you pair that with the ability to collect room tax. Where the problem comes in, if you do that after they come in, it looks like you're just going after their money. So if we had this on the books and all of a sudden a hotel decides to go up, we can automatically start collecting versus the hotel goes up. Now we try to pass an ordinance to get the room tax. That's what... So when that's kind of, they paired them together. If you do short-term rental, and you can try to do the room tax at the same time. So that's that's the motivation behind it. Not, because we're not, we don't have any money. You know, there's no money coming in. It's just setting it up for the future. Yeah. Let me, um, let me just work on that and see if there's something we can have in there without actually doing a committee, you know what I mean, right away. I think, personally, I think, as long as you, the agreement with the chamber, these are segregated funds where you have to use them to bring tourism to the community. I don't feel like you can't do that. No, and that and that's actually my thought. What I was actually thinking is the chamber, and I've already talked a little bit, they would have a subcommittee called tourism. What let's just keep it simple, tourism. They would have a body and that's where it would go. It would not go to the main group. It would go to the tourism and then they would decide to spend it on you know what I mean? That's kind of how, because they're a group that already meets and they already have an golf outing group and this kind of community. So it'd be a little bit easier for them to do that. Yeah, I And we can always change it. If we I, all get a hotel here, then we'd probably yeah. bring it back to a commission. I, I changed the way I thought this out. For um, their mark, they have twice a summer. And it's, it's a, it a uh -huh. And they have, they have like 10 vendors. They have some food trucks. They had music in a bandstand. And and there was a playground for kids to play on. They they, they literally had it. Uh -huh. And they found the information group and said, who, who does this? And they have it's called Looper Arts Inc. Okay. And it is a group. That's all they do. Now, SAW has up some hotels, so I'm mm -hmm. sure they have funds coming in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all they do. They even gave me their mission statement. Oh, wow. And it was it was completely, it was bringing people into the SAW. You know. Yeah. See our vendor, you know, our, our our businesses and all that. I was like, that's that's kind of like what the chamber is supposed to be. Part of it, yeah. Part of what they're doing. And if we ask them, will you do this? Probably. Yeah, because I've already talked to Katie. Is it Katie? Katie Rutter. Yeah. And uh, they were, they, they, they said, yeah, we'd be interested. I mean, we had to sit down with them. I, it was just a, I threw out saying, hey, is this something that you'd be able to uh, yeah. help us out with? And they said, yes. I mean, we'd have to sit down and define it. And it would clearly have to be that break. It can't go into their general fund, obviously. Um, uh, even though I, I, it'd be interesting to see, I would, I'm guessing most of their time spent on fundraising. Second would be events to bring in people, right? But they're already... There are already teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah for trout tri days, days and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And they're already thinking. I, I know from the Lions perspective, I don't know right. the chamber, that they, they think about those things. Yeah. yeah. Let me just uh, let me just grab one of these and then try to uh, take a look and try to come up with something that. Can you do a first draft? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people can have something to look at. I, this, you know, if you look at most of these ordinances, they carry pretty much the same legal yeah. target of right. Yeah. Keep it down. yeah. So just that, it's more on how is it going to run. All right. Um, so All right. As an aside, event thing they have that's run by River. Oh, they do. They do everything. Oh, everything that you've ever thought was actually cool. Interesting. Oh, that's kind of a cool group. Yeah. And they're an in, obviously because they're it's a five, they're, they're a they're a five oh five oh one C. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm what I'm saying is they're they are independent from the village. It's yes. not a village. Yes, they are. Yeah. Or you, you can do a commission, but I you know, like I say, again, commission when you have a commission. Unless you have the right people, but most of them you just put more work on staff. You know, if you had a nonprofit, they kind of plus you, you start asking for expertise. But you know, um, hey, congratulations! Part of uh, running a a market night. Well, that might not necessarily be your area of expertise, right. but it gets thrown on you. Whereas. If you've got the outside group, they can actually yeah. bring in people with that. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let me work on that. Then. Try to get something back by the October. Uh, Jed and Michael, do you got any comments on this topic? I feel the same as before. I think that we get it set up. We run it through the tourism part of the uh, Chamber of Commerce until we need otherwise. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. This all sounds fine. All right. Thank you. All right. Number three, discussion and possible action regarding the village purchase purchasing policy. Um, I know we looked at it last week and I think we were uh some people had strong feelings and putting stronger language into it on using um state contracts um so i guess i'm going to open it up yeah i'm gonna say i forgot to open up the... all right uh you see that the changes what are people's feelings on that i think it good my, my question is of course yes no Budget being you guys talk about different things and public works makes the most purchases. There's my life shop, but well, I appreciate that. But that avoids you know, you know, and then there's somebody talking about the UTV or the ATV that the village bought and had that. And I'm looking at the electric car in them and uh, next year's budget. And I'm, I'm just wondering where to well, I it stops it. Well, I, I think what we need, you're right. I think what's been lacking is probably the oversight of it. Because I've talked to some department heads, they didn't know how to work that or even knew that it existed. So I think we have to do it. And it really probably falls on Bobby for the um, enforcement part of it, making sure when people spend, I think it should be in-house versus going to the policy. I, I yeah. I think Bobby needs to make sure everybody's following the policy. I think the policy needs to be written by the policy makers, but the enforcement of the policy really should be with in staff and clearly finance director should be probably number one. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, because you're going, to, they're going to ask, mm -hmm. are they showing? Do you have any news? Do you have any And you're going to say no. And they're going to ask. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's you, it's Brian. But in the end, you're going to find out. Oh, well, after the audit. There are lists along that. So when you bunch of. I mean, dollars for a vehicle or whatever, but we don't know what we're getting. So we spent sixty-eight thousand dollars on one-time pickup truck with very limited. I'm doing research for them. 
they bit them, very limited information about what got or, or not was there, but not spelled out like you normally see. Yeah. And I know there's a past history where you guys beat you to death in one truck, you running boards, you need an AM radio, all that stuff. Was beat up and you can't do that. But it's got to be a better way of you know, pricing for it, not over taxing the people who are borrowing more money because we want an $80,000 truck or whatever. And at the end of the day, we could have got it for 50, but we had a whole bunch of other things onto it. So yeah. is there a way that we could be more, know what we're buying, be a pro with it? So you want more of a spec sheet? Or, yeah. So, I mean, we went at, at Pepsi, we bought and and uh, and typically at the time, the, you know, the department had that one patient that were off. They would come and they'd say, these are the that I want. And, and that was the very first part of the capital process was, really? You need a tandem macro with a sleeper cap? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> you can get away with single axle, no sleeper cap. And once they settled on the specs, that went up a bit. Um, you know, you know, whoever it was going to and whether the state was part of that, you know, well, we didn't have state contracts. That's first of all, that's what we decided. Right. And then, yeah, yeah the thing was that. And, and I think we, if you looked at the police, the squads this yeah. year, you kind of saw that they had the state bid for a, the squad car. And then they had a list of additions like the push bumper, they had the, uh, the light bar, they had uh, the divider, they had the bars on the, you know, protecting the window. You know, so it was all broken down so you could see. And, you know, I guess board members could have questioned, you know, if this was needed or if that was, you know, I did. I asked, can we use our current light bar? You know, I didn't know they were so outdated. So, but that's kind of, you know, what you're talking about for everything. That's one of the money and then there's an old yeah. check for you guys. Yeah. Um, no. no, I I I wouldn't think that's actually a cap. That's more of a give me that's more of a, I, a capital problem. Very specific. This is what I and this is what I'm asking for based on the fact. Yeah, I, I think what people the history, at least my impression on the history is. Thinking people have done all that, and then it comes to a dollar amount. Like if the squads, if you look, it was a dollar amount that gets put on to the SIP. You know that this is the amount that we want because the SIP is looking borrowing aspect of. But I do think there should be. It's, and I don't think it's a bad idea. I thought it was helpful to look at the squads and the added stuff yeah. that they were doing putting on because you know there could have been things like you say. Some of that stuff is five grand a piece, you know. So looking at that and questioning, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for certain items, but like the claw for right. I mean, it is what it is. You get what the manufacturer makes, right? You know, that fits yeah. your machine. So I wouldn't say everything has to be spec out. I don't need to know that it's 24 inches and yeah, you know, 50. Yeah. PSI, you know, but I agree with you when it's, and it seems like vehicles would be the biggest one. That what are the, what are you adding to get, what's the base truck? What's like you say, the plow yeah. and the sander and the salter. Yeah. I mean, with the claw, it's like, I'm looking for this model. Yeah. Because that's the only thing that fits. Right. I mean, that's, that's easier. Yeah. <laughs> not by, not by an tractor. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you see that when they submit? I mean, when we do the SIP, it's just the item and the price and the priority and where the money's coming. We generally have not broken it down. Now, the chief broke it down for the squad cards. 
you see that I, with I will everything? Say the chief is one of the better ones. He does provide more information. Okay. Whereas, you know, the pick on Jerry, he might not provide a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he might just say, oh, I need a new truck. I think it's probably going to be about this. And, but I'll, you know, once I actually bid it, I'll figure out exactly how much it'll be. Right. Or maybe he's making phone calls and just has Asking. a number in the head and doesn't provide well, one guy who did get from Jerry on the last truck on the email and he says um I think Dean and Culture I'll get you the price for yeah, so I think he's asking, he's just not yeah. getting printouts and providing them. Yeah. Printouts. So I think he's calling around, but he's just yeah. getting, yeah. But somebody I think he's going to do with the more is that in their state contract pricing, the new ones in the power center, they were a little cheaper than what we were seeing initially because yeah. that state contract. Is right. Oh, yeah. And that's like a third party that's probably they didn't make sure. Right. Yeah, it's just sometimes with the state contracting, you can't always get the model that you want because some of the companies don't go that route. But you're right. It's definitely, we should always be looking at that as a starting point to me. And I agree. And that's, I, I was going to put some word in it, but I just don't know what we do. I do think there's a value. Let's say you're buying a Dodge truck. If here in town, it's an extra five hundred dollars. I think we should pay the extra five hundred. If it's five thousand, I'm not quite sure that benefit. But you know what I'm saying? Because we do want to support. In, in my in my my question goes makes that. Well, no, I was saying you'd put it in the policy. Okay. You can buy local if it's within uh, two percent uh, okay. or one. You know what I'm saying? So it's very clear. Okay, because I was having one of those, okay, 500, so okay, 5,000 is not very... Uh, well, that's why I didn't put it in, because I didn't know how to so write it. On the form that I created that I forgot to put in the packet, but I thought I emailed it out, at the bottom it says, like, if you don't choose the lowest bit, what's your reason? Yeah. So yeah. they would just put, you know, it's the local company, and so we yeah. picked them. Right. Or so we I was just trying to give them, you know, maybe some guidance, you know, you know, because again, we're telling the staff that we would do this and could do this, but we're not giving them really things. So yeah. if you had a percentage, for example, it would be really easy for them to make that go. That's probably a justification is it's $515. Right, I see what you're saying. Is that yeah. okay? And you're on stuff with justifying it. I got so, you. So yeah. I, I, for, for purposes of what you were just saying, you know, I just said $50,000 truck. Yeah, I, I, I could throw it out. I don't know how to do it. To me, that seems like a reasonable. Oh, absolutely. Thing. I think I don't I, think any of us would deny that if yeah we bought from local for an extra five hundred bucks right. on a fifty thousand dollar yeah truck yeah. It, it, but it's it does bring up the point. Okay, you go two percent, you go three percent, right? You know what is what is yeah. a comfortable level. And I would do percentage because it's easier to calculate and it's a solid number versus hundred to that because it might be something that's not even five hundred dollars. Right, five hundred dollars on a five thousand dollar item. So yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, you know, I, I was going to do it, and I thought maybe you do percentages, but I, I just said ah, I'll just leave it be right now. Don't make things yeah, and I, talk about it. It's more my that's the other part that we know. We're paying interest on that minor we're borrowing as well, right? Mm -hmm. It's all the same number. So it, even $50,000 is probably a bigger deal for the percentage we pay, but it does add up eventually. I know, but I do believe sometimes you should, you know, I would always support a business in cross plan. I would have no problem paying $500 for that because I know what we're getting for the property taxes. You know what I mean? And we want the business to survive. And we want it to look good, and you know what I mean. Yeah, We've got an investment; they got tip money, even, and yeah. you know. So I, I support them. I'm kind yeah, of I, I, well, I would. Yeah. I, I was like, I, I, I'm okay with give. Don't get me wrong; I'm okay with you know five hundred dollars. But if it's really five hundred dollars, and I had gone to you know the Dodge dealer up in Sock, and I'd gone to you know the one on the east side. And Kelsey's comes in $500 higher. Right? Meet that price. 
Oh well, yeah, you can <laughs> always. I'm hoping we're always trying to borrow. Yeah, I'm really going to buy from you. But but he gets yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he'll say, hey, those guys you do a higher yeah. volume than I do, so I can. Yeah, you do that on a personal car, though. You know, if you were oh. fine, but you know, oh, you know so I, I think we should at least take that shot, right? You know. Oh, I yeah. I, I'm just assuming that. Should you... we put that in the policy? Must negotiate. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's in the time. Once you group is kind of hard to back away from that. Try to go to somebody else and say, "Can you beat this price?" Or whatever. I suppose you could. But you kind of, I think you kind of you're supposed to do. Well, yeah, we did it all the time. Yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> I think yeah. negotiating is a bad thing, and even if you get a higher one. You know, to to come here and say, "Hey, can you get close to this?" You know, just sometimes some dealerships just don't want to take on the state contract cost. They just don't make enough money on that. You know, it's not like that's the big company agreeing to that price. Not all the little dealerships. So, you know, everybody's in a different spot, and that's why some honor. Uh, it, uh, and there, were, I remember one time at Madison, we bought the squad, we had to buy them all from Milwaukee because Kaiser got pissed off or something and they weren't, they weren't going to sell the state contract squads. And, you know, it was only a year, so someone rattled them. And I don't know what it was, but we bought one whole 2025. 20, I was going to save the world and by doing that, kind of change it. Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden, I missed I'm not as angry as I thought. Yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we good with what is written here, or do we want to just hold on this? And is there something else we would like to put in there? I like that idea. I think simple is something I got okay. to follow. Something. All right. You should know we're going to buy something. We got a form for all, right? Yeah. And I did show the form to, I think, Mike and Chief. I don't know that Jerry was around. They, they were like, yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. Well, good. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to accept uh, the changes to the purchasing policy? All right. I have a motion. Sure. All right. I'll second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Uh, to approve the changes to the purchasing uh, policy. Any discussion? So this is Michael. I just have a quick question then. I mean, I liked everything that you guys were just talking about in terms of local and all that, but none of that's going to go into a policy at all or this, what, you know, or whatever. Well, I guess it, um, I guess it's not that it can't at some point, but I don't know. I don't know if any of us are comfortable with knowing what level that would be. And is that something maybe that the board will add when they look at it? We can do that, or we can just do it as when you do your form, you know, and they say why they didn't take low, where they say that and they give the number, and then you just approve it that way. You know, give it the maximum flexibility, or do we try to come up with a formula? Right. Okay. I guess. Or do you just, or do you just add a simple line that says we encourage you to buy locally if possible? Yeah, but what is that? I I, I don't want to leave it that open because it'll be very possible. Oh. Yeah. The problem is we want to. There's got to be some limitations to that possible. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's somewhat covered with Bobby, uh, where she says when they fill out this form that she has at the end, it says, if you don't take the lowest bid, why not? So there is an avenue for someone to say, hey, the difference of this five, this difference of buying out of the community is all $500, which is 1%. Of the purchase cost, so I think it's. I'd like to stay local. Do it kind of like that. Use an educational thing for staff. I'm open. I just don't That's know what what the good word no, is. I'm fine. With, I'm fine with that. I just made the suggestion based off of what Michael said. 
Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Michael, what did, what are your thoughts on language you would use? Yeah, that that I don't know. I mean, the last time I spoke, I mean, I was really like, oh, it should come back to the village board and all that. And I'm not really all that concerned about about it coming back to the board. I'm just more concerned with having a policy in place where um and I kind of heard some of what John uh, John was saying, but it was kind of cutting in and out a little bit on on the computer there. I'm assuming he's there in the in the in the building with you. But it's like in terms is it sort of it's just all these ideas, and I don't know how we need to express them better because it, you know, Jerry's I'm just gonna say the director of public works or Jerry's going out and buying that one ton Dodge pickup truck. It's like, you know. I guess I'm just caught. Like, how do you say, oh, you you need to go and buy the 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 fleet service price or whatever that is, rather than just getting three local bids from local dealers and none of them take the fleet amount and it's a difference of ten thousand dollars. I mean, how do we prevent? I mean, that's ten thousand dollars being saved and just inside the wording of the policy it doesn't read like that. But let's see, and that's just where I don't know how do you write that or can you write that. Well, I mean, if you want, we can say it's uh, items over 10,000. You have to at least check state bid. I, th thought, uh, I thought it did, but it might oh, have been one of those where you can do sole bits off a of state. It, it's, I mean, the and the way that the inside yeah, it's of the Yeah, but well, it's like give them the option of soul or go get three bids. It's like, it's almost like I feel we should have them go and check the state bid so that that is known. And okay. then they're comparing it against that. Like that's kind of, I guess, I think that's the piece that's missing because if you go to three dealerships and they just give you the manufacturer, the manufacturer suggested retail price. It's not really competitive bidding then. Right. No. So what you were saying is we put, uh, under sole source purchases number F, that becomes into the top paragraph as uh, one of the first steps they have to do. Yes, that I think that that would greatly, uh, yeah, like satisfy like what I'm pretty much just thinking about because I think, like just with in the in the CIP this last time, I kind of went out and looked at the Dodge one ton truck. And, you know, for the price that Jerry had in there, like I was like, okay, it's the one ton truck. And then you get it like, so it can, you know, put the max amount of weight on it. Like there were three different versions with how much weight it could carry. And when I clicked on the max weight thing, it came to be, um, I forget what it was, $55,000. But then when you add in the $10,000 for the dump, like the dump truck part of it, it came exactly to his amount. And I'm like, I don't, is this how he figured out what he number he wanted in the CIP kind of like went through the back of my head, you know, like it wasn't even a, a search for what the, what the state bid was like for the vehicle. And that's where with the research that Tim had done before, it seemed like it was like a $4,000 savings, like per truck. Yeah. Well, how, I think we can under purchasing responsibility. Can we put the, that language into that? You think from F, I mean, keep it where it is you know because that's still a justification for souls if you buy it off the state contract you don't need to go get this but under purchasing can we put in there that uh the starting you must check with state bid and that those other things i'm not really sure what they are i haven't heard of those but um basically we're saying the preference is to buy it from state bid but if the item you want or need isn't available on statement then you get no bids. no what we want them is to everybody needs to go out and look at what the cost is at state bid. Yeah. so you have a, a starting point then you can go out and get local bids what michael's saying is if you go out and do local bids everybody might be five thousand more than what you can get off a of state bid. Okay. so one of your bids has to be yes yeah. yeah. okay that's a better way of doing it that do you want that in the policy or just on the form? No, it should be in the policy under um, purchasing responsibility okay. or the procedure. Maybe you could do the procedure, whatever, wherever you want it there. And then you can still leave that language in the sole source because I still think most places allow that. If you have it buy it from state bid, you don't need to go get. And 
the law, state statute, also allows for that. Yeah, I thought state that it was always going to be part of the process because you never know how low. Right. And, right. But not, like I say, not everything is on there. But that's got to be, I like the language. This is your first, you have to go there to get one of your bids. And then mm -hmm. you can compare them. I mean, if the state bid is 50000 and down here at the Dodge dealership is 50500 they can write in there, we'd like to, to buy it here. There's a 1% difference. Yeah, no, I like that. That, that shouldn't be. Yeah, and yeah, I think that that would help out a great deal because then we know, yeah, that they just didn't call up one dealer and be like, sounds great, I'll buy it, you know? No, no, you're right. I, I think... The I hear what you're saying too. On even if you get three bids, that that doesn't mean those three bids will be necessarily lower than state bid. No, or even anywhere close to it. It's right, it's right. you know. I got yeah, that makes sense. Because we're making the assumption that the three bids are going to you know it's a capitalistic system and they're going to be underbidding each other where they all just might be like, hey, let's just all give them a really high bid and one of us gets it. <laughs> you you could have to look at that's a little. <laughs> I mean, I know, don't think it's good. You, you just understand what I'm saying. It's just... And sometimes with state bids, they're not real practical because you got to buy it from like Stevens Point, and it's not worth servicing something up in Stevens Point. Well, well I'm just thinking of like fire trucks and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, that guy from uh, Ewald uh, clarified that he said no. The you can have a service to any brand. We have a Chevy, any Chevy dealer, you need, they love it because it's really good. They get their money, they're guaranteed for warranty stuff, and having a service is all done through. Mm -hmm. they, he said, you can go anywhere and have a service. You don't have to go back to Ewald and talk to Ewald and walk a shop. You don't have to go there. He said, you can go for Mass. Huh. I'm just, I think that's interesting because we all go to Kaiser. I mean, none of us go to Middleton. And for the West Side, it'd be a lot closer. I do Middleton. You can Huh. Um, okay. There's good money in it. Oh, no, I understand that. But I thought the reason some of these dealerships go with state bid is they're not making any money on the vehicle, but they'll make money because if under state bid, you got to go to that. I don't know if that's real. Yeah. Um, I, I think I, they hope that you're going to bring Yeah, I just know in Madison, you take everything to Kaiser. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what, you know, the West District in Midtown, we can go to Middleton well, a lot closer. I, yeah. Madison. Oh. No, we have our own uh, street. We all we they do all their own man. They do all their own maintenance and fixing of vehicles okay. unless they're under warranty. Oh, okay, it's only the warranty part that we go to Kaiser. Okay. Yeah, no, they have a, a fleet. Yeah, they fix everything themselves. They got it. It's interesting because yeah, with our cars, it's it's like here's your warrant. You're covered for now what it is, it's yeah. up to 12 years. You can take it to any Toyota dealership. Oh, interesting. All right, so All should right. we vote the motion down then? Um, the motion was to No, well, let's just do a motion, uh, an amend, amendment to the motion. If I can have amendment to put in the language of um uh you look checking on uh state contract. That's all I need. Yeah, I'll make that motion to amend it. All right, so I have a, a, a yeah, I have I'll a motion and a second to amend <laughs> the original motion to add the language of the state contract requirement. Uh any discussion? Um all can I hear was... the actual language? What's that? Can I hear the actual language before we vote on it? Uh, I don't know it. Oh, I gotta, I gotta write it. <laughs> Do we need to wait? Well, it's gonna say say that they have to. Uh, one of the one of the bids that they have to look at is the state contract uh, under the responsibility of the things that fall under this policy. Okay. So, so then I have a question. And so then with that being added, will that change the 
purchasing policy bid tabulation form that she sent out because it's a yeah. bid or the three quotes. So it'll re be reflected on that. I'll, um, yeah, I'll make changes on the form too. Okay. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. All right. So now we're back to the original motion of accepting this with the new, with the change in language on the state contract, uh, the state contract bid. All right, any other discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. All right, any future agenda items? All right, do I have a motion for adjournment? All right, do I have a second? Yes, that's what I do today. Yeah. <laughs> All that's right. For coming, <laughs> I, have, I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Yeah.